Good morning, everyone. We are continuing with Merging with Shiva, Chapter 26, The Subconscious Mind. Lesson 181, Meditation's Great Obstacle. Things that you cannot face in yourself, you will hate when you see them in someone else. <laughs> Interesting idea, right? Why do you hate something and you see in someone else? Because it's in you. And you can't face it. To counteract this, your universal love, the platform for self-realization, must be awakened into the emotions of the instinctive mind and filter out into the conscious mind. So as you are meditating and the various aspects of your subconscious come up, face them positively, reprogram them beautifully, and they will settle back into simply a memory pattern, resolved and incapable of disturbing you again. Oh, my comment. Guru David's last sentence is repeating an idea from last week. They referring to areas of the subconscious, will settle back into simply a memory pattern resolved and incapable of disturbing you again. As I mentioned then, we have taken the emotion out of the memory and just an unemotional memory is what remains. So that's the goal. We're not trying to forget what happened. We're trying to remove the emotion from the memory. Back to the text. If you see something in someone else you do not like and it is affecting you emotionally, sit down and face it within your own subconscious mind. The sore spot is located there. If you feel someone is doing something that you do not think he should be doing and this really gets on your nerves, just know that under the right circumstances you may do the same thing. because the tendency to react to it is there in your subconscious. Get into yourself and reprogram that area of your subconscious with good, positive affirmations. Firm up your lifestyle. Be more strict with yourself. Use your willpower and think positively. Do not allow a weak link in a chain of habit patterns to bar your spiritual unfoldment even for a moment. Sometimes we detect the weak link in our own chain by looking into the lives of other people. So my comment. About every year I am asked by a devotee about this idea. Reacting strongly to something in someone else means it's in you. They say something like, for example, I react when this person does certain things. Does that mean the tendency to do the same things is in me? So Gurudeva pointed out the key in this paragraph, which is that it really gets on your nerves. Meaning, for example, it registers an eight on your reaction scale, while other similar issues with people usually only register a four. <laughs> So it really stands out. It's, it's a much stronger reaction than your normal reaction. That's how you know it's hidden within you. Text. If your parents are living the type of life that grates on your nerves, begin to realize now that perhaps when you become their age, you may live a similar life. The grating effect that you feel indicates that the seeds of that kind of life are just coming up and you are trying to suppress them by criticizing your parents, where, as what you should be doing, is strengthening yourself through having compassion toward them. 
One of the biggest barriers on the spiritual path is to dislike our own subconscious as we become familiar with it. We must watch this pitfall very closely. The subconscious mind is not an enemy. It is just a well-used piece of equipment that we are renewing. If we make an enemy out of the subconscious mind and walk around hanging our head, wondering why this happened and why that happened, and if it were not for the subconscious, I would be farther along the path, we are simply programming the subconscious to become an even more formidable barrier. Instead, we have to bless the subconscious mind and look at it as a vital tool to help us in our spiritual evolution. Take a mountaintop attitude. If you are having a difficult day, tell yourself, I'm working with my subconscious mind. Admittedly, things are not working out very well for me today, but I think I will have it all adjusted by evening. Run to the store, buy a lot of paper, do a lot of writing and burning and clear up various subconscious areas and release awareness to soar within again. This is called the Vasanadaha Tantra. The point I want to make is, do not fear the subconscious mind. Realize that it has not been programmed as it should be. Therefore, the program has to be changed. Realize that your superconsciousness is the master programmer. Get busy and reprogram your subconscious through the power of affirmation. You can do it through the powers of meditation. So my comment, in describing the benefits of affirmations, I like to stress that the subconscious has been programmed in a haphazard way by life up to the point before you start consciously reprogramming it. It is a mixture of positive events and negative events. In repeating a daily affirmation, we are reprogramming the subconscious in a systematic way with positive thoughts. So that's important to understand. We're purposefully reprogramming or remolding the subconscious mind with affirmations. Text. Of course, there is a portion of the subconscious mind that remains more or less the same, handling the instinctive and voluntary processes of the physical body. But by following a sattvic diet, which is conducive to meditation, this area of the subconscious also begins to improve. As we improve food intake and elimination processes, we stop storing up poisons in our cells. As stored poisons are released within the body, they are eliminated regularly. This more physical area of the subconscious mind is also improved through proper breathing, proper posture, hatha yoga, getting plenty of sun, exercise, walking, and all of the many wonderful things that benefit the physical body. Add to your contemplative lifestyle a craft. Working with your hands and doing a craft as a hobby. Taking physical substance and turning it into something different, new and beautiful. This kind of creativity is important in remolding the subconscious mind. It is also symbolic. You are actually remolding something on the physical plane and by doing so, educating yourself in the process of changing the appearance of a physical structure, thus making it easier to change the more subtle mental and emotional structures within your subconscious mind. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.